Positive, my name is Rilla Moore and welcome to this finance and freedom channel. YouTube videos, Instagram accounts, all dedicated to the hustle. Grind as hard as you can and then you'll finally achieve your dream of having the flashy cars and the big houses. <sighs> Been there, done that. <laughs> In this video, I'll be touching on the damaging effects that this has on our life, the huge sacrifices that you're making if you are living according to the hustle culture. And I'll also add some ways of maybe making it a little bit more attainable for you to become successful without having to break your back in the process. <laughs> So let's get into it. If you are new to this channel, make sure that you like and subscribe. We have an amazing community here of people that are like-minded on the journey to acquiring finance and freedom. And we put our videos every Tuesday and Thursday, so stick around. There is an exceptional newsletter that we have written by the very talented writer, Leon, the co-founder of Abundantia. There is so much wisdom in these newsletters. I think you're gonna enjoy them immensely. Link in bio to subscribe. And also we have a pre-sale of the course membership combo for Abundantia, all things finance and freedom. If you'd like to get life time access for a huge discounted price. There is a link in bio to find out about that. I'm sure that you've heard of people like Gary Vee or Grant Cardone that are constantly talking about the hustle culture and how you have to be basically working non-stop in order to make success possible for you. Then you have people like Ty Lopez and Dan Locke who are hypnotizing you with flashy things and telling you that this is what's going to bring you happiness. This is what you should be striving for. And the more that you hustle, the more that you grind, the more likely you're going to get this. Outbeat everybody. Wake up earlier than anybody else. Hustle, hustle, hustle. <laughs> this mentality is uh, quite poisonous and it's been a really nice, interesting shift to see people like Gary Vee stop talking so much about the hustle culture and instead focusing on the importance of why you are doing business and talking about family and health and so forth. So this has been a very nice switch. We're seeing the exit of humanity from the hustle culture, I think, which is really, really refreshing. I have spoken many times about the fact that there are always sprints in your journey of becoming successful and then rest and then sprints and rest. You cannot achieve a level of success without doing anything for it. You need to take action. It's not gonna happen without you doing something. So yes, there are elements of sprints, elements of hustle as such. However, the narrative right now with the hustle culture is at absolutely any cost, you just keep going and this is where the danger lies. Here's what hustle culture is taking away from you. Before I talk about my own experiences of living through hustle culture and coming out on the other side, I'm gonna give you some concrete examples from science that is showing you what hustle culture is actually taking away from you. Firstly, it's killing your creativity. Studies have shown that people that work more than 50 hours a week are actually much less creative than people that work less hours. This of course applies to whether you're working for yourself or for a company. Creativity is one of the most important things when it comes to business and entrepreneurship. You need creativity. Even though a lot of people think that business isn't creative, it absolutely is creative. I think the narrow definition of creativity and art is too narrow <laughs> and it should be encapsulating the things that you have to do within business. You have to creatively think of how you're going to approach the customers, how you're going to sell your product, how you're going to reach your customers, how you're going to brand your business very creatively. There are so many components of creativity within business. And then of course, depending on what you're selling. I am a bit of an artist at heart. I love beautiful things. So for my own journey, when I discovered that I was creative about six or seven years ago, I started taking self-portraits and being intrigued by photography. And so the creative aspect of my photography and my self-portraits was vital in order for me to grow my brand because so much of my brand was based around self-portraits at the beginning. Whether you like to admit it or not, you are a creative soul. All of us are creative souls. And that means that you are taking your creativity away if you're working more than 50 hours a week as studies in science have shown. Secondly, it's ruining your health. I don't think that anyone really needs to tell you that working too much is not very good for your health. One of the biggest things that working too much causes is the increase in stress, which increases your cortisol levels. We have now found out from science that one of the biggest reasons for almost all diseases in the entire world that we have right now is stress. Most of us are chronically stressed and we don't even know it because we don't even know what stress-free existence looks like or feels like. Furthermore, people that overwork are less likely to look after their bodies, less likely to exercise, less likely to make positive view choices. As well as, of course, we're talking about sitting down for extremely long hours. Most people sit when they're working and that is obviously not good for your posture. Human bodies aren't designed to sit for these lengths of time. All of these things, stress, sitting down, not eating properly, of course, are linked to diseases and shorter lifespans. This is not what we want. We become entrepreneurs to provide value for others, but also to free ourselves. So do not go down the path of hustle culture, especially for your health. If you're not healthy, you can't serve others at the best capacity anyway. So you're doing a huge disservice to your customers upfront anyway, if you're not, not looking after yourself and being selfish in this regard, you have to be selfish and look after your health if you wanna be serving your customers better. I'm not a doctor, 
nor a scientist as you can tell but i'm going to link all the studies down below about these topics so you can have a little bit of a read further and just to sum up this little section as some of you might know in japan there is a term called karoshi where people literally die at their desk from a heart attack or a stroke because they overwork themselves too much now this is of course on the extreme end this is a very big phenomenon apparently in japan for myself i started in the hustle culture when i was in my 20s basically my entire 20s i spent a decade in the hustle land definitely the worst part for me was my mental health how much it screwed with that i'm a naturally petite person anyway and i run on fast and <laughs> high energy so i think it metabolizes everything very well so i might look healthy on the outside but i was sitting really badly i have problems with my hip flexes right now because i sit too much still and i'm learning to undo this learning to move my body a lot more i think in the long term if i didn't stop with hus hustle culture there would have been really bad long-term effects for myself as well definitely back problems have that <laughs> already wow okay there's a few things next by working more, you may actually be getting less done. There are multiple studies that have shown that people that work too much are actually less productive than people that work reasonable hours. So time and time again, we're seeing that people that have rest and recovery are much higher performing individuals. Here in Iceland, there has been an exciting study being done. 1% of the population, which might not seem huge, but that's a big amount of population, was given a four day work week instead of a five day work week. They wanted to see how it would compare. Over the time of the study, they found that it was overwhelmingly successful. The people that worked four days a week, they were much more satisfied at work, they had less burnout, they had less stress, higher quality of life. And the exciting thing is, is that their productivity either stayed on par or went up than the five day working people. So it looks like Iceland might be rolling out the four day work week. There are some deep discussions about this, which is exciting because we're finally moving away from the industrial age model of five days a week, which was obviously created for that period of time. And now we're moving into a much more humane model of work. Personally for myself, overworking, it kind of ruined a lot for me by the end when I was so at the end of everything my candle was burning out I haven't really been able to pick up a camera and do my creative work for a long time self-portrait wise I haven't really created self-portraits or even YouTube videos on my other channel I used to create two videos a week for months and months and months and months and years and years and now I'm down to about one or two videos a month uh, because I'm still not up to my full productivity or creative level so even though yes I was able to sustain my productivity for a long time and it got me to where I was I am now paying the price still for that. <laughs> we'll see if I can recover and learn my lessons from this experience as well. Lastly, it's taking away things that are much more important than work or money. The older I get, the more that I realize that truly life isn't about the material things. There is a certain level of emptiness when you have material things and nothing else behind that. I've been there, I've done that. I can agree that I definitely sacrificed so many of my friendships and my family relationships in order to pursue my career, thousand percent. I wanted to be a professional swimmer, quickly became obsessed with getting the best grades in high school, university, and then of course I wanted to succeed in business. So I sacrificed a lot of these smaller moments that there is a small level of regret around that because I didn't have the typical 20s. Going out, getting drunk with friends, it wasn't a thing that I really did. I'm still trying to learn how to make very, very good friendships. I have friends all over the world, but I feel like I could do better. I feel like I could be a better friend, so I'm trying to prioritize friendships as much as possible, as well as can't wait to see my family again and just give them a big squeeze because I haven't really spent that much time with them as well since I started my obsession with trying to become successful. Many, many sacrifices were made and lessons are now learning because I also also had a realization this is a bit deeper but whatever we're going there I had this you know wake up that we're all gonna die <laughs> and this was a big shock for me and I think most people experience life in two stages one life before you knew you were gonna die and then life after you realize you're gonna die and so I've had this realization and now I'm really cherishing these simple moments with friends and family so much and just trying to be less distracted by small trivial things and just really being grateful for being alive every single second of every day and being around friends and nature and eating delicious food just like these simple simple things so if this has not pulled out your heartstrings a little bit yet then I'm going to also drop some wisdom from the almighty Tim Ferriss Tim Ferriss one of the greatest business teachers and mentor for so many people around the world had a very important realization when it came to spending time with his parents Tim spoke about how he used to travel to visit his family two weeks out of the year and he predicted that maybe he had about 20 years that his parents were going to be alive for most people 
people at this stage think, oh, I've got 20 years with my parents, but that's not true because two weeks in 20 years is only 40 weeks in total. That's less than one year. The most precious currency we have in our entire life is time. This is something that can't be bought. It can't be multiplied. It can't be stretched. This is very finite currency and it is the most precious. So just always keeping yourself in check is a very good thing. This is something I'm still obviously learning myself. I think a lot of people in today's society are learning to prioritize the smaller things because we may look back on life and one day realize that the smaller things were in fact the big things and the most important parts of life. How I used to work in the past was essentially 16 hour days. For most of my 20s, I had bar jobs. I had full-time work for a while as well. Then I would just hustle on the side and create my businesses. So yeah, roughly every single day, seven days a week, I would be working about 16 hour days. I was extremely proud of the fact that I had no time off and that I used to tell people how busy I was and how many different projects I was doing. You better believe that this was something I was like, look at me, I'm so special. <laughs> How I'm choosing to work now is by flipping the script of my entire life upside down because I've of course reached a level of success that I'm super, super, super grateful for. Oh my gosh, I'm so grateful for it. It's given me the opportunity to realize that I'm safe. I think I was obviously striving a lot because I felt unsafe in the world through upbringing. I didn't like that at times we didn't have some money in the household and that caused some tension in the house. So I think I was striving because I wanted to ensure that I was gonna be safe for life. <laughs> so I just hustled, hustled. But now my approach is working a few days a week and then instead squeezing in things like meditation, spirituality, dancing, dressing interestingly, spending so much time with friends, being in nature. The aim is to ensure that I only work about four to five days a week but it's getting even better and the tipping point is actually becoming where I'm only working for about three days a week now which is really exciting. How I plan to work in the future is actually working one week a month and then having three weeks off. This is something Leon and I are still figuring out how we're going to make this happen. We recently got an editor. Hi guys! Delegating work is a new territory for me. I actually built up my $1 million business by myself. <laughs> so that was a lot of work. And in hindsight, I know that I could have done this with other people's help. And I think I would have been far more successful if I delegated earlier and I was able to part with my money and not just hoard and be afraid that it's gonna disappear. I'm now learning the joys of sharing your workload with other people and finding people that are interested in similar things as you and specializing in their industry, them uplifting me and me uplifting them. So it's finding that balance. It's like working in a community. So I'm really, really enjoying it. But of course, a few of you might be thinking, well, that's nice, you're successful. You don't need to hustle as much anymore, which is true, but I would still do it differently if I went back in time. So I would make space for living because I treated this so much like a race. And now that I got here, I was like, well, but I am only 30 <laughs> and I've gotten so much success. I could have just stretched that out more and enjoyed myself in between and taken time to rest and, and instead created a much more long-term sustainable sustainable company that was Sorella Moore, the original brand. But as I promised, I wanted to give you a more sustainable way of looking at your own financial journey and your own success. And one thing that is really important to note is how much money do you actually need to be more free for yourself? I remember speaking to a friend when I was on my journey uh, of success, 22 year old, maybe Sorel, and I was talking to this guy and he was like, I wanna be a billionaire. And I was like, I wanna be a billionaire too. And he just stops and he looks at me, he's like, do you know how much work it is to become a billionaire? And I was like, yeah, yeah, of course. I wanna do it so bad. <laughs> there is no way that I wanna be a billionaire. No way in heck the sacrifices you have to make for that, it is not for me. Look up the lifestyles of these billionaires and just check for yourself. That is not the lifestyle you want. Sure, they have jets and all that jazz. I don't know. I don't know if it's worth working 60, 70 hours a day. You have to pull yourself back in and your imagination of just thinking, I need a lot of money. And instead check how much money you actually need in order to make yourself free financially or on the journey to write down all your expenses all of them per month have it written down and then you just need to substitute what you are spending with external income independent income that is what you actually need focus on that number don't focus on I need 10 million dollars a month instead focus is your expenses right now at two three thousand dollars a month five hundred dollars a month I don't know that is the goal you're striving for first and foremost on your independent financial journey it is not about wanting the shiny cars it is just about surpassing the expenses with your independent income. This is what you're actually going for. You do not need to hustle ridiculous hours to get there. It is much easier if you just focus on reaching that amount of money first and foremost. So forget about the hustle culture. Forget about the fact that it has to happen in the next week for you to be independent successfully. People overestimate how much they can do in a year and underestimate what they can do in a decade. Take your time. Life is much funner this way. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. This channel is dedicated to finance and freedom 
and therefore freedom also means freedom of health, freedom of mind, freedom to actually live and experience living. <laughs> Don't forget there is an amazing mailing list as well as the pre-sale of our course membership. So if you want to get lifetime access for a huge discount, there is a link in the bio for that and I will see you in the next one.